Hey guys, Shane here. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at painting a Perry Miniature 28mm or 1 to 56 scale British Line Infantry Officer from the American Revolution or War of Independence. So, we're going to be covering painting um, white linen and naturally their iconic red tunic. So, um, the following steps we're going to take a look at painting these uniforms. It's a wonderful um, model from their plastic ranges, very nicely detailed and a lot of character. So grab your bits and pieces, grab your brushes and paints and we'll get stuck in. So the first thing we're going to start working on is the iconic red tunic of the British infantry during this era and for that I'm going to apply a watered down um, layer of Citadel's Mephiston Red and I've just basically put a drop of water into it just to give me a slightly thinner consistency. It just allows me to get it where I want in the model. So I'm going to apply this all over his jacket. And I'm being careful not to apply it too thickly because this is a pretty thick paint. The pigment is quite um, intense. So it does require to be watered down somewhat. But again, just take your time and build up. So now with our Mephiston Red laid, I've applied two coats and allowed it fully to dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the white details. So white's often seen as a very difficult colour to work with. <clears throat> However, once you understand the sequence to do white, it becomes a very easy colour to work with. So normally what I do and what many other painters do is we work in the grey scale and work our way up. So in order to base the white, even though I've already primed this model in a grey colour, I still like to um, prime or base it in grey and work up from there. So I'm going to take some Vallejo neutral grey and start applying it to these trousers. And this is going to be the base and shade colour for our grey, or for our white should I say. And any area that's white will get primed or based in this colour should I say. So with our um, white area base coated in neutral grey, now I'm going to start basing the blue elements of his tunic and that's going to be done with army painter deep blue and I'm just going to um, paint in the edges of his coat or his tunic this might need a coat or two to get right but again just build that up layer by layer I want to be using the same colour for his cuffs of his jacket or his tunic, should I say? So that's our blue details laid down and now we're going to start working on his cap and for that we're going to apply a couple of coats of German grey. So with his hat out of the way I'm going to work on his boots and I'm going to use the same colour, German grey. I don't want to be too clean about this as I've yet to paint in his base so I don't mind if I cover the base with a bit of grey either, it's fine. So for the canvas pouch I'm going to use Vallejo Stone Grey, it's my base colour. It's a very good colour for getting a canvas look. Okay, now we're going to uh, base the goals for both the the cross guard and hilt of his sword and his buttons. And for that, I'll be using Vallejo game color brassy brass as my base color, and I'll be using a rather fine tip brush. And once again, I have thinned down my paint mixture with a drop or two of water. 
the same as the other paints. So this color is going to go on these buttons, which there's quite a few, so take your time with them. And then we're going to move up onto the hilt of the sword, and the multiple buttons that run down the side of his jacket. The easiest thing to do is just use the side of your brush. I'm also going to base the gorget, which is the metal ceremonial armor that hangs from the officer's lower throat, which was more of a ceremonial piece, but it did offer a small bit of armor protection uh, to the soldier's throat. This is more of a um, this is more of a, a show of office than any real piece of armored or protection equipment, but I'm sure it did have a psychological effect as well. Now we're going to move on to any steel details, and for this we're going to use Vallejo Model Air Steel, and this is mostly going to go on to the, uh, the saber that the officer is carrying, or the officer's sword should I say. So with the metallics blocked in, now we're going to add our final colours before we start adding uh, washes. And that is going to be just a little bit of flat black onto the bow of his brightcore, or his cap or whatever you want to call it. And once again, black to the leather finish of his scabbard. Being careful not to paint over the uh, steel and brass fittings on either side of the, or either end of the scabbard. So now with our base colours blocked in, now would be a good idea to go and do any touch-up work. For example, I've gotten a bit of gold onto the blue areas for the button, so I'm gonna go back in and touch that up. And I'm also going to touch up any other areas I've gone over. With all our touch-ups out of the way, now it's time to start adding shade to the model. And for that, we'll be using washes from Citadel. For the cloth and brass details, we're going to be using Agrad's Earthshade. And we're going to be careful not to allow the wash to pool too much around the model, kind of keeping it as even as possible. And for the steel of the sword and the top of the sheet, we're going to be using just a small amount of null oil just to help tone down the vibrance of the steel, just a small bit. So we've allowed our washes to dry, and now we're going to start working on the highlights. So this is not too difficult a step. It does require a little bit of time, but it does give a very nice result. So we're going to start working back up our colours again. So what we'll do is we're going to start with the, the whites, so like his, um, his jacket and trousers. And we're going to go back to our neutral grey, the, the first colour we laid, and we're going to paint it on to the most prominent elements of his trousers, such as the tops of the creases, and we're just going to leave the washed areas in any recess, and it gives a very nice transition of colour. So we'll come back with some neutral grey again to his waistcoat and I'm just basically going to leave the washed layer just in the recesses and it just helps frame everything nicely. So for the first layer of whites built up, again using our neutral grey as our first highlight colour, now it's time to add the first highlight colour to our reds and you might have guessed this, we're going to refer back to Mephiston Red once more and we're going to paint that over everything except the recesses and the areas where deep shade would occur. And in exactly the same way as we did the trousers and the waistcoat, we're going to do his tunic. So 
I am merely going to put the Mephiston Red over the areas where the light will catch the most, such as the tops of creases. First layer of highlighting for the tunic and trousers is down, and now we're going to do the same for the, the blue trim and cuffs of his uniform, and again we're going back to Army Painter Deep Blue, and I'm just going to catch the edges of the blue trim and um, the tops of the cuffs, nice and simple, so by just running my brush uh, along the edge, Like so, we'll make that blue pop right out. Again, I am being careful not to paint over any of the gold buttons that we've painted in. And again, just the leading edges of this jacket. I can leave the rest of it in shade. Same for the cuffs of his his uniform. So I'm just going to paint out, the, uh, pick out the, the kind of the middle of the cuff, the center, if you will, and just put a small dab, dollop of paint into that to make it pop out. And the same on the other side. Again, painting the top of the cuff and letting it fade away back to the darker colour at the bottom of the cuff. And it's the same here with the, uh, it's a little bit hard to show on camera from the way I'm set up. Uh, same with the two little bits of the, the blue trim in between his webbing. I am just going to catch the edges of it. Like that. Same on the other side, just for it, just a leading edge. So there's our blue first layer of blue highlighted and it's made a pop considerably. Now we're going to go with our second layer of highlights and again we're going to start again with the white details and for that I'm going to use sky grey. Um, and for the sky grey I'm only going to focus on the tops of the creases and any area where the material is stretched tight as in that case then it will be um, it will be absorbing quite a bit of light, so it will be quite a bit lighter. So I'm just going to thin down some of my paint with a bit of water. So the lighter colour is going to focus mostly around his knee, this area in front of his leg. Blend it back to the darker grey. By keeping our paints nice and thin, it allows us to get a very vibrant colour with a nice transition. And any area I feel the light will catch the most, I will pick out in this lighter colour. Now, with the white linen details painted in, now we're going to put in our final highlight on our blue details. So for this, I'm just going to tape what colours I have on my wet palette, which is the base colours that we've been using, which is the Army Painter Deep Blue. And I'm just going to basically take a small amount of sky grey and mix it in. Um, about maybe 80% blue to 20% of the lighter colour. I don't want this to be overly bright, but not um, too subtle either. I want to draw attention to the blue details. And I'm literally just going to paint this color on the very leading edges of the blue details. So the very tops of his cuffs where the sun would be hitting it the most and the leading edges of his jacket trim. So we'll do it from this side. And I'm just going to catch and Using the 
into my brush and I'll trace along the corner of the blue just to make this all pop out and to give it a sense uh, to define its borders as it were. That's what, that was the word I tried to look for. <laughs> so with the main colours of these uniform painted in and highlighted, I'm going to add a single final highlight of the reds just to make it pop a little bit more so I want it to be slightly more striking. So I'm going to take a very thin down layer of Citadel's Evil Sun Scarlet and I'm only going to paint it along the areas where the light is catching the most and the furry tops of creases just to um, make it all pop out a little bit more. Now this colour is a lot more intense so I don't want too much of it or it will kind of detract from the overall look that we're, we've achieved. So I'm going to start here with the sash and just paint the leading edge of that in the scarlet. Again, I want it to look a little different as well. And as you can see, this is a very more intense colour. But it immediately pops. Like even in this somewhat poor light, it immediately pops out. So any detail I feel is a little bit underexposed, like along his, his sleeves. I'm just going to paint a little line in here. I'm just going to pick back out the scarlet. I'm also going to catch some of the tops of the creases, like so, just to pop it out. And it is very subtle, so I don't want it to be too intense in effect. I'm also going to pick out the tops of his shoulders in this colour as the light is directly coming down as we are painting this in what's known as the 12 o'clock um, or zenith lighting, the light coming directly um, below. There's also the 5 o'clock where the, it's a, coming in as an angle. There's quite a few actually. Like so. So with the main components of these uniform painted and highlighted, I'm going to add um, a single highlight colour to the cross tracks, which would have been made out of canvas or leather, depending on his rank or what he's uh, access to. So I'm going to take a little bit of Vallejo game colour off-white and paint that into the straps, just so there's a little bit of a visual differentiation between the linen of his white uniform and that of the cross straps, just to show that they are in fact different materials. Again, this is optional, you don't have to put this part in if you don't want, but I do find it adds a nice layer of interest and um, detail to the model. So you can see it's immediately lightened this strap here. Now with that detail out of the way, we're going to add in our highlights for the metallics and for that we're going to use Vallejo Bright Bronze from their game colour range and it's going to paint it directly out of the bottle. So I'm going to focus on the buttons, the gorget and the hilt of the sword. Especially like the, the center of the gorget, make a pop right out, as you can see there. Sword hilt. Again, just on the top, will do. So, nail there. That makes it pop right out. And then for the buttons, very carefully, I'm going to pop them out right as well. Now I'm going to go in and highlight the small little backpack or pouch he's carrying and for that I'm just going to take um, stone grey and just paint it directly over the preceding layer. Now with the bulk of the detail painting done, we're going to add the white trim to his hat, which is very simple. I decided to leave it off until now because I didn't want to weather it. So I'm just going to take some sky grey onto my brush 
and using the corner of my brush as I got a 50 degree angle, I am just going to trace the edge. I don't want too much brush paint on my brush either for this. Just a little bit will do. So there you have my very quick um, how to paint British line infantry from the American Revolution to a tabletop standard. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful and maybe inspire you to undertake a few projects of your own. So for more please uh, stay tuned for more tutorials and uh, build videos. And until the next time, thanks very much for watching, stay safe as always and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.